It's repeat time. I am Pete on this show. It's a little different from our Tuesday podcast and television program. On repeat, we dig deeper into topics. Sometimes they're financial, sometimes they're not, and we don't always stay on topic. Joining me as always is producer Nicole. Hello, Nicole. Hi, Pete. Uh, episode two of Repeat. Uh, again, Repeat was designed to not necessarily be forced to stay on topic. Absolutely. From time to time, we will uh, get off track. We have been known to do that, yeah. If people are wanting hard hinted, <laughs> hard hitting <laughs> financial advice, Tuesdays are for them. Oh, that's, that's their jam. And by hard hitting, we mean eventually we answer the questions right. on Tuesdays. We get there. Thursdays, it's a little more laid back. Thursdays, it's a little bit more off the cuff. Uh, we encourage people to go to Facebook to, to find the Repeaters, the Repeaters, which is our group, uh, to help us uh, further the discussion online for yeah, the show. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so this week's topic is financial role models. Do we have financial role models? Story for you. Yes. Okay, so uh, oh, this is my disclaimer that I, from time to time I have to make. What I'm about to make, uh, these statements I'm about to make, are not political in any way. So now, now yeah. I know you're excited. Oh, yeah, now you know. Okay, not at all political, yet they involve a person who is now in politics. What a plot twist. Okay, so it in involves our president prior to the president being the president. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. So I'm going to go, I'm picking a day, I'm going to go f 10 years ago, okay. maybe 15 years ago. Was talking to a guy at, uh, I went to lunch with this guy. Yeah. And he was talking to, I was starting my career and he was sort of saying like, hey, this is how you work on things and you need to read books about success and money. And I'm like, oh, okay, sure, I'm listening. Sounds right, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm in. And he says, you know who your financial, you know who my financial role model is? And he said, he says, it's Donald Trump. And I was like, oh, okay. And Tell I me more. Yeah, right? I didn't know a lot about Donald Trump at the time. Other, I just sort of knew who he was. Um, and I used to listen to him on Howard Stern because he was a frequent guest on Howard Stern. I used oh, to listen I didn't to Howard know that. Stern all the time. Yeah. And I was, he's like, so read read this book. It's called The Art of the Deal. Huh. So I, I start reading the book, and this is where it's not political, everybody. And I think to myself, okay, this is this person's financial role model. I mean, that was right. sort of my first idea of role model. Started reading it, and I thought, man, I don't want to run my life this way. <laughs> you know? It's like that whole, you're like, cool, that's how you do it. That is yeah. not how I will right. be Right, okay, it. so again, not political. I'm not saying I don't want to be president, I'm dead, or I do. I just am saying, like, sometimes having a role model doesn't mean finding a billionaire and saying uh -uh. that's my favorite billionaire. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, Bill Gates is my financial role model, but the only reason is because he's wealthy, not necessarily because he gives so much to charity. Right, so I'm thinking, and as I was thinking about who my financial role models are, quote unquote, and nothing of it has to do with the amount of wealth that they actually have. It's more so the way they go about their money practices. I 100% agree. Uh, now, some of my financial role models, as we're going to talk here on the show, happen to be wealthy. Yeah. But I think it's because of, of how they run their lives. Absolutely. Not they're my role model because they're, they're wealthy. But as a young person, I, I think, not you, but when I, me, as a young person, back when I was a young person, I used to think rich people were the people to look up to. Oh, that they've all got it all figured out. That yeah. Because they've got X amount of no dollars, yeah. they know what they're doing. So that is to say, I don't necessarily aspire to have wealth personally. Yeah. I do aspire to have the habits that might create wealth. Absolutely. So let's, let's do this. Uh, I want to go through the types of people who I tend to find to be role models. Sort of a, I wrote a column about this probably three years ago. Wow. Maybe four. Maybe we'll link it. I, maybe we, we, we should. I'm we just should link. I'm just going to more or less read it as we talk about it anyway. <laughs> um, so here are the types of people that like, I really get into financially. And I learn a lot from the type of person who gets a second job because that's what the situation calls for. When they're willing to put in the hustle to make it work. Mad respect. Like, I, you know, sometimes we look at a person and we're like, well, they only have to work one job and it's solid. That's my role model. Well, that's great and all, but honestly, the person that gets the second job because they have to, that's more admirable to me. Right, because it's not easy to get the second job. It's not easy to be like, I'm not doing okay just doing what I'm doing right now. There's got to be something else that, that fixes this. That's a good point. I mean, even the ability and willingness to self-assess in a negative way and do something about it, that alone. That is one of the 
I think the most admirable characteristics of an individual, when, especially when we see it here. I always kind of harp on is one of the hardest things for you to do is for you to acknowledge that there's, a, there's an issue that yes. you have and that you have to do something to change it. Addressing a problem is one of the hardest things to do. I mean, we all have a, a finite amount of income. We all have a finite number of years to earn that income. And I think knowing your limits is super important. Now, the next one yeah. is a little weird. Um, but, you know, in my column, it was right after I, I came across the situation. You know, the single mom who hasn't bought herself a piece of clothing in three years because her growing kids need, need cl- clothing needs are, 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 are worsening, if you will. Yeah. I mean, that, the, the sort of selflessness that comes with that. Absolutely. Of, of like, look, I'm a clothes horse. I like to look nice. Uh, maybe not today. Uh, <laughs> I, I like to look nice. But, but that thing, it's like, well, look, I've only got so much money for clothing. I, my kids need it. I'm going to dress like the, I've been dressing for the last five years. So like, that just requires so much discipline and sacrifice. Yeah to get to where she needs to be financially. And I'm not pandering by saying single mom, which occasionally I'm accused of, of pandering. Uh, single parent, it is a placeholder. Yeah, single parent. Yeah. And it's funny, we talked on, we touched on single parents last episode as well. Yeah, single parents, y'all. Yeah. Uh, how about this one? The regional manager, so it's got a little, a pretty good title, mm-hmm. job title, that eats a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for lunch every day because he doesn't want to burden his daughter with student loan debt. Wow. You know what I mean? So you're like, a, you're doing all right. You got a decent title. You haven't saved enough for your, your college education for your daughter. And she's in her, what, a, she's 10. And so you take your lunch every day and in a direct effort to fund her education. That's, that is the sort of person that I like. Yeah. That, I mean, that is true selflessness. Yeah. That, yeah. That's why when we try to put a name here in a few minutes to who our financial role model is, or even the characteristics, and, and we'll, we will name names. We will name names. It's really about these tough decisions, you know? Yeah. Uh, the guy who's driven the same car for the last 15 years and the lady that paid off her home at age 48 because she made extra payments every month. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, I'm with you. I-, I love when people are like, oh, we paid off our mortgage in seven years or I paid off my student loans in a two and a half year period. I'm like, yeah, you're my role model. You're my role model. Now, I will say this, you know, we've talked about it on, on previous shows. The whole fire thing, financial independence, retire early. Yes, I totally forgot about that. We this, should do a yeah. whole show on repeat about that. We should that. do that. It's interesting. It's the concept of busting your hump for like eight or 10 years and then never mm-hmm. working again. Like, I don't. It's, I would have too much time on my hands. And while I think that's admirable, right? Th- those folks aren't necessarily a role model. Of mine. They're not doing anything wrong, but I don't want to model my behavior uh-uh. after working like a mercenary for eight to 10 years so I can do nothing. Right. To do the extreme to then do the opposite of that extreme. There's something, yeah, there's a weird, yeah, I don't know. Now, now I'm not going to do this next one, but I still find it admirable. Yeah. It's the people that just like got a chicken coop in their yard. Yes. And they like grow their own food. Yes. Because philosophically it makes sense for them to just sort of provide off the land in that chicken's gifts. Right. (laughs) If I had a chicken in my yard, my homeowners association would not be happy. <gasps> oh, I don't even know what my no. homeowners association would do. How about the day laborer that, or, or someone working the third shift that comes home at night mm-hmm. or the morning, I guess, uh, and drops their pocket change into a jar every day uh, because eventually that will give that person a vacation after years of dropping coins into the jar. Right. What and that's there are multiple things to that because one it's cool to watch the visual mm-hmm. that comes with that there's something very like muscle memory almost of that and so then the positive association you get to put with that by sending you and whoever else on a vacation like what a powerful like visual memory you know uh, Grandpa Dunn's Pringles can which usually sits up here why is it below kids were in here so I mean this is what that was I mean this is you want to talk about a role model my grandpa by all means is a financial role model but. Th- this was the can that he would drop his pocket yeah. change in. Not to go on vacation. This was for donuts. <laughs> Just as important. I was going to say, same thing, though. Isn't that crazy to think? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it goes uh, back to that whole, it's, it's the little things. Like, the little things add up. It, speaking of adding up, uh, the person who puts something on a layaway in October yeah, and pays for it over those two months so they can get a Christmas gift for their child, the... I'm totally into layaway because I think it's the ultimate and the right way to make a purchase. I agree. You purchase the item first and then you get it as opposed to you get it and then you eventually try to pay for it with credit. Um, 
I don't know. So th- those are the sorts of things. Uh, the, 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 my, my financial role models aren't necessarily people that have a private jet Mm-mm. or that have a lot of money or penned a book about success. Right. I often roll my eyes at the tweets that come across of like the 10 things billionaires do every morning. I'm like, oh. Oh, I gotta be like that. Take it. Oh, what do you, who cares? No, right, yeah. It, seriously, who cares? <laughs> so let's do this. Let's break it down this way. First of all, before I do this, I was going to break it down by kind of budgeting, investing, lifestyle, attitude in terms of like to help us jog our ideas of who these people are in our lives. Mm-hmm. Do you have an overall financial role model? Yeah. Okay. Who, who is your overall financial role model? My dad. Your dad. Okay. So what is it overall that makes him your role model? My dad has worked very hard for everything in his life. There has been no means him being given a free ride okay. for anything. And so he so badly wanted to create stability for my mom and our family that he worked 65, 70 hour weeks, put himself through graduate school and has made sacrifices so that he can send us on vacation and we're going on vacation and it's a big deal and we're going to not feel badly about spending the money because we've saved that money for that vacation. He's put... My brother and I both through four years of college, he sent my little brother to a Catholic school, a private Catholic school for high school. And he always made us feel secure in a way that there would be money, but never burdened us when there wasn't. Yeah. I never, I always felt secure in knowing that my dad would take care of me. Well, so you don't think he was going to call you in the office when he's 12, when you're 12 and be like, all right, time to cut back on the bubble gum whatever 12 year olds right, do yeah. I do 12, 12 year olds are probably past the bubble gum I think that the biggest thing that I, that my dad has taught me is that when you save and earn and work hard for everything that you have around you that you need to take pride in that and not let yourself worry about other things he really taught me the true value of hard work and taking care of yourself so that you can feel the reward on the other end of that that is fair yeah I appreciate that I, I would say and this person doesn't know this and I wonder if they listen I know they have friends that listen one of my best friends, uh, my, they're a couple friends, right? Husband and wife. Yeah. Uh, the, the, I, I would actually say they are one of my financial role models for really weird reasons, okay? Yeah. They're both PhDs. They're really smart people. They make a solid income, but they don't make a ridiculous income. No. They make a nice income. Um, uh, my friend was a college professor, then decided to go back into nursing school, and now he's a nurse, and mm-hmm. like it's the whole thing. Anyway, as, as I look at the decisions they make about their financial life, they're never flashy decisions. No. They're all, always like painstaking. Like they're just drawn out, <laughs> tedious decisions. However, like they've got so much discipline, it's absurd. Like they nice, they like nice things like, like everybody, but like they, they'll enjoy wine, you know? So uh, we always enjoy wine when we're together, but they will say, all right, so this bill didn't come this month for whatever reason. So now the case of wine we're going to buy this month can be this amount of money instead of this amount of money. Yes. And that's how they've thought for a decade. And it, it's really impressive. It's funny. I have my other financial role model or someone I just think that deserves like a kudos to is the exact same way. Yeah. Like her budgeting and just, and she by, she's getting ready to start graduate school and she put herself through college and she just doesn't want to have to worry about money. So she's made it. So the fact that she budgets and does the exact same thing if she was like, oh, well, my meal prep budget this week was X amount of dollars less. So yeah, let's go and do this because I, I know I have the cash to do so. Just giving herself the financial freedom and security like that, I think is so impressive. It's sort of a weird understated thing that we're that we're identifying in these people, yeah. right? It's they don't live flashy lives. Uh-uh. They they don't make the most money. No. They don't have the most money. I think it's just uh, it's their commitment to their financial goals yeah. that's so impressive. There's discipline because there's n- she does not go without uh, by any means. I mean, she goes to music festivals with me and my special friend and we go out and she she does many different things, but she just budgets budgets it so that she can do so. I, I think, and in my friend's situation, and probably not yours, this is all in the face of paying for daycare costs, right? Yeah. I, I think you know we don't talk about daycare costs a lot on the show, and we should sometime. And yeah. I know you don't have a huge frame of reference for that in your current life. Being no. That. 
a young not, 20 something. Not yet, but, <laughs> not but, yet. I, but I am surrounded by it and not always in the most positive way. Sure. I'm seeing the negative side effects of that. I think from a role model standpoint, any young family or individual who's dealing with children uh, that can fund daycare and not totally go backwards financially. And then as soon as daycare costs are over, mm -hmm. transition that money and repurpose it towards financial priorities that don't involve increasing the lifestyle. Like, I'm really into that. I am too. And that's what's great about my friend who, so part of her student loans, what she was paying off of that, it, it decreased when some special circumstances came into play. So instead of just then absorbing that income, she's redirected that and is now like doubling the amount of savings that she puts away each paycheck. It's, it's amazing. So from a budgeting standpoint, I think you would say your friend. Oh, yeah. She's absolutely okay. And I would say from a budgeting standpoint in terms of role models, my friend Luke and J.O., like they – I've written several books on budgeting, but I still look at them as the gold standard of how – Yeah. Now, again, it's not always pretty. No. Sometimes it's tedious, and, and it, but that's not criticism. No. That is like – they're willing to put up with, you know, at times you're trying to make a financial decision and at some point you go, oh, screw it. It doesn't, I don't care. It, yeah. Right. That whole, like, they don't the, do that. No, they just push through it. Even when it's hard and you're like, I don't know where I'm going with this. And I don't, this is, this isn't easy right now. And I would say what stops me from living my life that way, or I guess what stops Mrs. Planner and I from living our financial life that way is me. Yeah. Not Mrs. Planner. She could, she could definitely do that. Mm -hmm. uh, it is me that has the weakness that cannot. I am so, and I'm very much so the Mrs. Planner of my relationship. So you could do that. Yeah. And the special friend is more like me in the sense that discipline can be challenging. Yes. I'm very much so the saver. You know, I, the weird thing is, and so the way I've combated this over the years, because you have to know your own limitations, is that we save everything first. Right. Uh, all of our, our, our goals are fully funded. So then whatever's left over, we can do what we want. But I still, I wish I had more discipline in that area. Yeah. Things are still getting accomplished. Don't worry, everybody. Uh, second is investing. Do you think you have an investing role model? This is a trickier question. I wouldn't. Well, role model is a funny word for this because it's my brother. As an investor. Yes. Okay. So how you're going to have to explain. So this. he's 20 years old. Okay. And he knows more about investing now yeah. than I do as a 24 year old who works for a financial wellness company from a standpoint of he is so ready at the bit to start investing and building a, his portfolio and Good whatnot because he understands how much it's going to benefit him down the road. I like, like that. Like he's 20 years old and he already gets that. Well, okay. Well, that's the perfect role model. Right. Yeah. Uh, mine is uh, my friends. Uh, I always look at my friends, right? I, you know, just, I just like, I really respect... That's good, though, that you friends. respect your friends like that. Yeah. That means you're friends with the right people. <laughs> my friends, uh, Phil and Lauren, like, they, they have this way of being part of winners. Like, they, they get into, like, rental properties, and they'll open up business just like that. Or Yeah. I mean, it, it, they'll take an economic risk. The, and it's just, it is crazy impressive. Like, it, it is, uh, I really enjoy them. And by the way, when just so you know, when I'm with these groups of people, we never talk about money. No. So I don't want you to think like I have sitting around with my friends and I'm just talking about money. I never uh -uh. talk about money with my friends. Like if it's relevant in the conversation of like what we're having or if we reach yeah. out and kind of extend that we want to talk about something like that. Absolutely. But yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. All right. So your brother, mm -hmm. Phil and Lauren. How about now lifestyle is a tricky one. If I say who's your role model, your financial lifestyle from a role model. Wait, who's your financial role model from a lifestyle standpoint? That's where this gets tricky because then it almost does feel like keeping up with the Joneses or I want what they have. Right. But I guess I'm going, is there someone that lives a nice controlled lifestyle that you appreciate? I still I think it goes back to my friend who budgets the way she does. Just because she, she knows herself and she knows the tendencies that kind of get her flustered and get her mind going. And she has made it so that in a way that she is so proactive to not let those things take control sure. and ruin everything that she has worked so hard to build up for herself. Yeah, mine's kind of a weird one. Uh, my uncle Jim and my aunt Ann, they have 10 children. Oh my God. Okay. The probably from like 37 years old down to 17 years old, okay? uh. something like that. Uh, so you got, they have 10 children they live in a, in a beautiful house on the country. He's a, he owns his own real estate practice, but very, over the years, he'd had sort of different sales gigs. 
and I don't know how much money he makes, but from a lifestyle perspective, he has put nine kids through college, 10 on the, going to be soon. Um, now the kids take on student loan debt because of the family of that, but it's just right. a really controlled lifestyle. It's like this. Yeah. If the kids want to come and live at their house post graduation, they can. But what, they're the most sensible family ever. Back, um, this was probably almost 20 years ago. I played golf with him once. He's not really a golfer. It was just like a family event, and he came, and yeah. he's terrible like me. And I, I, he said, I don't play golf much because the way I view it is every time I lose a ball, that's basically a gallon of milk. Oh. Right? And when you have 10 kids, Milk's expensive. Yeah. That's I a mean, lot of milk. So I always I always remember that and thinking like, that guy really understands and cons- controls his lifestyle. Uh, when when the daughters of this family get married, they get married in their backyard under a giant tent. They bought a giant tent, like a classy tent. Classy. Classytents.com. This is amazing. And then the, the tents are like all lighted. It's just like the most wonderful outdoor wedding. And every daughter, and there's like seven of them, six of them have this wedding not because uh, it's cheap because it's just a really special lifestyle thing for them i love that i love that it's like one of those yes it's probably very financially responsible for them to do so in such a way but also then it's it's a tradition it's it's a part of being in this family that not everyone gets to experience their wedding like this like that's such a celebration i love it uh, so the final one is attitude. Do you have, and th- this is a pretty nuanced one. If, if you need time to buy time, I can give you one. But is there someone that's got the right attitude? Just someone who has like a good attitude towards life? Or uh, like... about, but about a good financial attitude. And it doesn't have to be positive. It's just sort of like a, almost a good head on their shoulders of no matter what their circumstances are. So you could even plug in someone here. Uh, and if you're listening and watching, you can plug someone in here as you think through these as well. By the way, you're supposed to be thinking through these. Um, that you just appreciate the way they deal with what they're dealt. Yeah. Uh, our The vice president of our company. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think she's one of the best examples and role models of this. I've written about her before. Um, she makes tremendous financial decisions. And they're not easy financial no. decisions. And she understands, you know, just the weight of the decisions that she's having to make and she could cop out, but yeah. she hasn't. And I've had to watch her within the almost year and a half that I've known her now. Yeah. I've had to watch her make these financial decisions. And it's just like, what a strong kudos for her to just roll in with it. They're courageous decisions. They are. Which, which speaks to the one I was going to bring up. It's my friend Kipley. She lives out in Colorado area. So she's interesting, uh, divorced. Um, and after the divorce, it's that pick up the pieces thing. Yeah. Right. I, I hate this is not condescending, but you are fortunately not to the age yet where your friends start divorcing. They're just now no. getting married. In fact, because of Luffing changes right. and trends, they're. Are, are you in the midst of it? Or are you still a few years? Um, I can barely scroll like once through anything of yeah. social media without seeing someone got married over the weekend or someone got engaged over the weekend. Okay. Very, so it's all in your face right it's now. All That's a good in time. My face. It's all uh, So we went through that stage where we had friends getting divorced and. And the way that she, I don't know, fought through that, and it didn't even have really to do with like settlements and who got this or that. I just always look at the decisions she is, she makes after that from a financial standpoint. And I'm like, wow. I mean, that's not easy, but it's like it's a, it's really inspiring. Yeah. Right. I don't, so I guess the whole point of, of today's episode is this: is that when we're encouraged to to look and and to respect and you should respect everybody, but you, and you, you know be reverent towards the wealthy yeah. or people that have things. I think it's more interesting to look within your inner circle and to look at the people making decisions on a daily basis, not, oh, I love their car or they've got the best house. Feel free to do that. But like, who budget, budgets the best? Who, right. who invests the best? One of the best investment ones I didn't even bring it up is my friend Kevin, who refuses to invest in the stock market, <laughs> yet has built a great deal of wealth in spite of his absolute refusal to invest in the stock market. And it's funny because we were friends to a point where when I was still a financial advisor, where I could have tried to get him as a client or talk him out of you know, avoiding the market. Right. But I became so enamored with his insistence on not investing in the market. Because like, that comes from somewhere, right? 
Right, and uh, yeah, and, but he's so strong in his convictions to do it a different way, and has. Yeah. And he did the research to know to how do you build wealth without being in the stock market. And I mean, I just, for years, I just stood by in awe. I just watched it, and it was, it was pretty impressive, primarily because of his convictions, not Absolutely. because he's an investment genius. So it's just weird stuff. It is. All right, what did we say next week's topic was? Didn't we have a meeting today, and we discussed oh. next week's topic? Oh, aren't we going to do lessons that we learned from our parents? Yes. Okay, so this is more, this, so it sounds like role model stuff, but it's not. Sometimes you learn good lessons from your parents. Sometimes you learn, oh, maybe try it a different way, right? And so uh, next week, uh, what we're going to explore and what we're going to put on the repeaters page are, mm -hmm. what are some things you learned, good and bad? Um, here's the ugly reality about becoming an adult, especially mid to late 20s, is you figure out for the first time that your parents were just adults too. They're, they were just trying to figure it out as they much as that. They had no I'm idea what the hell they were doing. Right now. And, um, and it's, it's, it may, some people come to that sooner than others. Some people never get there. But it's that realization that allows you to look at the decisions they made and not question them yeah. and second guess them. But then you get to look at what the consequences of those decisions were and you get to learn from their mistakes. Yeah. So we will try to have that conversation next week without alienating our families. <laughs> But we will They're also we will also go to the repeaters page. So yes. uh, later this week, Nicole will post on the repeaters page. Who you know? What have you learned from your parents, good and bad? What mistakes did they make that uh, you definitely learned from? And by all uh, by all means, we'll also get a post this week about your financial role models. Yeah. who they are. Tag them on yes. Facebook. I'm and, curious, like what goes into what makes their financial role models? Maybe you've never told them. Yeah. You know, um, I, I, as I think back to the people I listed here, I've never told any of them how I feel about them yet. No. Now thousands and thousands of people are listening to it and those people don't know. And those people don't know. Oops. So uh, that's it. Yeah. That's repeat. That's repeat. Uh, if you haven't already, go to uh, PeteThePlanner.tv and watch Pete's Eats. Pete's Eats, episode three is dropping this week. Yeah, episode three. Episode three we release on Wednesdays. Of course, you're getting this podcast on Thursday. So episode three is up. And on f uh, next Wednesday, you'll have episode four, the 4th of July edition. So that's all we have time for. Repeat. That's all we have time for. Repeat. Thanks.